What's going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. I have gotten one of my grail boots and I want to tell you all about them in this video. Now these are the Nike Mercurial Vapor Superfly 2 World Cup. You've got this absolutely beautiful orange and silver box. This is like this is, I, I'm a little bit speechless here. This is going to take me a second because these boots are brand new. They're in the box and they're absolutely unbelievable, like unbelievable. So you've got the Nike Football Elite there on the front of the box. Obviously, this pattern with the uh, stripes goes all the way around the box. You've got the sizing here, which there was probably a tag right there, but it says Mercurial, M-R-C-R-L. Uh, Vapor Superfly 2 FG World Cup. These are in my usual size 9 US. And uh, it says right there, Elite Series on the side. So quick little bit about the Elite Series. So the Elite Series was what Nike did to all of their boots for the World Cup. In 2010, This that's when the Superfly 2 actually released. And I gotta say, Superfly 2, T90, was it 2 or 3 Elite? You had Tiempo 3 Elite, which I actually had this colorway of. I'm so annoyed that I got rid of them a long time ago. And then you had CTR 360 Maestri Elite. All of them had a carbon fiber, the same carbon fiber sole plate that's in these boots. And they basically just upped the technology. So they did synthetic leathers for everybody. They did uh, essentially all synthetic, all the highest tech materials that they could possibly do. And just turn this series of boots into absolute beasts and they're absolute icons in my opinion this is one of the best world cup packs of all time in my opinion so so cool so basic box and here we go oh my days oh my days wow they're like brand new absolutely brand new i just need a second Holy shit. Okay, well. I don't even know if I want to get them out of the box. They're just that good looking. Okay, well, let's do this. Let's push that a little bit forward into the side, and then you can have a view of these ones. These do come with the iconic drawer style box or the lunchbox style, uh, which is great. Uh, actually, I have a doorbell ringing. One sec. Okay, we're back. Let's jump straight back into it. Okay, so this is an absolutely stunning football boot for many reasons. Obviously, the colorway is one. Now, this colorway is, I think back in the day, was very polarizing. Some people were like, what the heck is Nike doing? Other people were like, this is awesome because it's iconic. This colorway was advertised as basically you're going to be able to see your the, the heel and your the contrast of these colors was like scientifically proven to be able to see it faster on pitch. And it's like that works if everyone on your team is wearing these and the other team isn't. But that's not how football boots work. Right. So uh, it, it just was very funny marketing that they went for that way but honestly i think this like purple silver metallic colorway looks absolutely unbelievable so let's go over some tech specs of what makes this boot so special in so many ways uh and, and potentially why it's notoriously horrible in a couple other ways now i'm gonna take these oh there you go see look at that oh my god goodness that is rough in this in the uh forefoot area okay so let's talk about tech specs of this football boot as i said launched in 2010 it came uh basically after superfly one which was an insane pair of football boots it was like no one had ever seen anything like it before absolutely insane amount of tech in that for the time these originally retailed for 400 us dollars which is absolutely ridiculous Obviously, the tech of the time, people justified it because it was like the boot you had to have if you fit in it. They were notoriously uncomfortable because of this upper. So this is an ultra thin, well, ultra thin in quotations. It is quite thin, to be fair. It's a Tasian synthetic upper with the internal flywire cables, which you can see that ran all the way through almost the toe box area 
all the way through till basically the heel, both on the lateral and the medial side. You can really see them on the medial side there coming through in that texturing. And basically the flywire cables wrapped underneath the boot and were secured into this sole plate and then went and wrapped around each of the lace holes so that as you tied the lace holes tight, those flywire cables, which by the way, do not stretch very much at all, if at all, would provide this insane amount of lockdown, which to be fair, it was way out of the world stiff for the time. Uh, and just in general, and even by modern today's standards, this is like one of the stiffest boots of all time. But that being said, it did provide quite a bit of lockdown. You had the carbon fiber outsole, which is iconic. And they did put the same carbon outsole on the other boots from this World Cup pack, as well as some of the other colorways that were moving forward from that time period. And then one of the major things that they did with this football boot and the sole plate is they introduced these studs, which are super unique and interesting. These are called Nike Sense Adaptive Traction Technology. And the way that Nike, Nike is a master at storytelling, at ads, at basically encouraging people to buy into what a boot makes you feel and the technology, even if it literally does nothing. These scent studs were supposed to inject or basically like push into the ground as you put your foot in. So as you dug into the ground, these scent studs, which actually, to be fair, actually do move back and forth a little bit if you press on that particular location inside the boot. They were supposed to act as traction adaptation so that you could wear this football boot on firm ground or soft ground. So the Nike basically went through this whole thing where they were like, well, soft ground studs are three millimeters longer. So we'll make a stud that just retracts and detracts uh, three millimeters, and then it can be an FG slash SG, and there's this whole thing. I know, it sounds insane to me, but these studs did look really cool, and frankly, they function just fine. You had the rest of these bladed studs, which all, of course, were bored out holes to save the, you know, minuscule amount of weight that was uh, in, in those little holes on the sole plate uh, and in those studs, but these were sort of the attraction other than the upper and the fly wire. So you had the carbon, obviously, which was on Superfly 1 as well, but these studs were like the main attraction outside of the fly wire. You had the 3D foam packaging around the heel collar, so that just provided a little bit of relief from the pressure that these boots kind of put you in. You have an internal heel counter that basically makes this heel area completely stiff. There is no way you are going to get any sort of adjustability from this heel. So one of the things that made this boot iconic was actually how uncomfortable it was. And one of the things that a lot of people did, you saw Cristiano Ronaldo when he first got his pair doing the hot water trick. So this is the boot basically that initiated that hot water trick. It was worn by CR7, Drogba, Clint Dempsey, many other players over the course of its lifespan back in 2010 and 11. And uh, I just think these are one of the most insane football boots and f not even to wear. Like I will put them on for the sake of this video. I will never wear these though because they are staying in the box. They are they are like god tier. In fact, I'll probably put them up on the wall somewhere so that you can see them because I do think these are just like one of, they're one of my grail football boots because of what they represented for football boot technology. And back in 2010, when I bought my original Tiempo 3 Elites, this was the boot that I wanted so bad, but of course it didn't fit. And so, but it was just like the marketing and the technology like this. I won't say that this particular boot did. This was definitely one of the boots though that got me started on this train that we are now in, right? Like this is what I do for a living and I love it. And it's in part because of this football boot. And I just think the colorway, how iconic that World Cup was in South Africa, and that what this boot represents as a sort of an amalgamation of technology and testing and marketing. And they're starting to do like proper advertisements now and really making them cool. That's what this boot represents for me. So without further ado, can't believe I'm saying this, let's get these on feet and see how they fit and feel.
I am out here in my backyard on the turf with the really, really beautiful and stunning Superfly 2. Now, I know you might be thinking, what the hell are you doing trying to get these on your feet, especially given that the, basically the, <laughs> the here, I'll show you guys on this camera. All of this right here is just cracking like crazy because they're old, they're unused, but oh my God, I wanna try them on. Um, I do have the Safari Edition, so that is the boot that I probably would wear if I was going to wear a pair of Superfly 2s. Definitely not these, just because they're not even broken in. But I wanted to get a first impression of what a new pair of Superfly 2s feels like. Oh my days, those are tight. <laughs> wow. That's insane. Those feel so tight. Um, and this black material on the inside of... The boot is actually flaking, so that's that's lovely. Um, I'm gonna try and tie these up, although they are very, very snug. Goodness, okay, there we go. See if that works better. Just a single knot here. Um, my guess is I'll have to take them off halfway through this on feet portion because they are so tight, especially here in this midfoot, but there you go. World Cup Superfly 2s, absolutely unbelievably large amount of space here because this material is not moldable at all which is really funny but they just look so sick oh very cool um to be honest i don't even know if i want to put on the left one or the right one excuse me yeah maybe not okay so here's a full look uh we're gonna keep this really short because these are absolutely crushing my feet um but yeah very very cool pair of football boots as far as how they compare to the normal vapors well, normal vapors the vapor 15s the the ones that are kind of in this current generation i will say that the underfoot feel obviously with these sense adaptive studs it does feel a little bit awkward, especially on turf, but I imagine if you were to put a pair of these on just in feel kind of how they feel underfoot between these and uh, the Vapor 15s, honestly, the shape of the, the way that the sole plate kind of puts you up on your toes, you can kind of see here how if I'm, if I'm actually planted it kind of sits me up like this, so my heel's off the ground. That feeling is very much the same with the Vapor 15. So from that standpoint, the feeling of the Vapor through the Superfly lineage really hasn't changed all that much from these to the Vapor 15s. Obviously the 15s and the Superfly 9s have a, a much comfort, more comfortable upper. It probably performs better as well. Uh, the touch on the ball's way more barefoot, all that stuff. Whereas these are just absolute bricks on your feet and they're so predetermined that it takes number one, forever to break a boot like this in and two, it is just an absolute tank on feet. Like there is no, I'm trying to wiggle my toes. You can kind of see it, but there is absolutely zero adjustability outside of the lacing system. Like they are just not, uh, not there as far as adjustability goes, which is fair enough because that's what the technology was at the time. And, you know, can't fault Nike for trying to be super, super, uh, I guess forward thinking. Maybe they thought that this adaptive studs would be like the next new thing, but, uh, yeah, very, very cool. I love this pair of football boots. They're absolutely going in my boot wall. Um, I know this was a really short on feet portion, but as you probably may know, who have those of you who had tried these, they are really stiff, very uncomfortable. My feet are hurting quite a bit right now, so I'm actually gonna take them off. Um, but before I do that, I'll just end the video here. If you guys do have any questions that I haven't answered, um, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys are interested in me doing more retro reviews, let me know which boots you guys want me to explore next and of course if they are comfortable like let's say from the same era of 2010 i got my herons on a pair of tiempo legend 3 elites from the same colorway pack i'd probably do a play test on them so if they're boots like that that actually fit my feet um, you guys can leave those comments down below and i'll see if i can find a, a pair because they're all super cool and i love that these retro boots are now you know these are now 14 years old which is insane because i remember that world cup like it was felt like yesterday so a 14 year old pair of boots i'm happy to go and test them even if i break them it's whatever it's part of the character of uh, building a channel off of actually playing in boots so yeah hope you guys enjoyed that video if you did hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as always be awesome take care i'll see you guys in the next video